I'm Rich Dar, I'm pastor of the United Methodist Church of Geneva, and I welcome you to our time of worship. I want to thank you for sharing this time with us today as we celebrate uh, Trinity Sunday. Uh, I invite you to register your worship attendance at GenevaUMC.org. With Governor Pritzker moving Illinois into stage three of his reopening plan, I'd like to share with you some of the work that we have been doing here at churches we think about reopening our doors. Uh, many of you are no doubt wondering when we will be able to gather together in person in church again and what plans are being made. Uh, if you've been following our communications, you know that, we, that we've acted for the safety of our congregation in moving our worship online. Since then, we've been working closely with the leadership of the Northern Illinois Conference throughout this ordeal. We've been following their recommendations to do online services and keep our buildings closed and working on plans to move forward. Now, last week, our conference released their return team plan and uh, held a Zoom meeting in which some of our staff participated. The return team plan follows the governor's phases, but adds to that. Following this guide, I, I call together some of our leaders for a first meeting and to create a health team to guide the church through the reopening process. Our primary concern is to reopen in a safe and faithful way. And to that end, we do not anticipate gathering in the church until phase four or five. Uh, so here's the plan for now. Uh, we will continue to worship online. Worship services are posted on Sunday morning on our website homepage and on Facebook. The services continue to be available all day Sunday on the website, afterwards on the online worship page of our website, and on Facebook. Online worship has been working well and will continue to be offered even after we are worshiping in person. Adult Sunday School, Youth Sunday School, Youth activities and children's Sunday school are all meeting online weekly, and they will continue to do so. Committees and small group meetings uh, are also being held online. The health team has been created to guide the church through the reopening process, and we'll be using the Northern Illinois Con uh, Conference documents to create our plan for reopening, and we'll meet weekly for now, and we'll update you every two to three weeks on our progress. Be sure to read our weekly e-news for the latest information. We will continue to do everything we can to keep you all safe and to do the planning and hard work necessary to open up our building in a responsible, faithful, and healthy manner. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to worship God. Loving God, triune God, we gather today to turn our minds and hearts toward you. May every aspect of our worship honor and please you. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Welcome to Church Boys and Girls and Kids of All Ages. Uh, today at church we're going to be talking about God's good creation and how God wants us to enjoy it but also to take good care of it. One of my favorite places in creation is right here on our patio off the back uh, of the parsonage here. And uh, one of my favorite flowers is this iris. I, I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love the peach color. And I'll tell you what, when I come out and take a look at these, it just it brightens my whole day. Now over here, you can't see these, but we've planted some lilies, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to enjoy them because another creature has thoroughly enjoyed them, and that is a rabbit's come along and has chewed them down to the nut. Now another thing I, I love about nature is uh, watching birds. In fact, you can hear the wren singing in the background, but this is uh, the fly-through feeder. Uh, every day I come out several times a day and I, I feed birds. We get blue jays, we get cardinals, we get woodpeckers, we get uh, nuthatches, all sorts of really beautiful birds that come in. And of course, the oranges up there, those are for Baltimore Orioles. They, they are a wonderful uh, color of orange and black. Now, if you follow me over here, uh, here's another bird feeder we have and this is for the ruby-throated hummingbirds and uh, they love to come in and feed here and often Don and I are having a cup of coffee out here or a meal and while we're eating the hummingbirds come in they're not afraid of us they enjoy a lunch or dinner of uh, some of their favorite nectar and we've also planted some really uh, really gorgeous flowers and uh, mainly for us to see, but also uh, we've selected plants that the hummingbirds uh, really enjoy eating from. And so we have uh, Agastache, we've got uh, Lantana, and uh, we've got Salvia as well. They're, uh, they're trumpet shaped, so the hummingbirds love to come in and feed them. In fact, this morning they were feeding off of this uh, purple Salvia right here. But God wants us to enjoy creation, but God also wants us to take good care of it. Uh, will you pray after me, repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for your good creation. Help us enjoy it. Help us take care of it. Amen. Please pray with me. Great God of comfort and peace, we come together in one heart, mind, and soul as your church in these uncertain times. We continue to suffer through a global pandemic, unsure of when our relief will come, feeling helpless in the face of the invisible, which is causing much pain and suffering, death and agony. There is still war and unrest in many places of the world, known and unknown, women and children still uncared for and forced to fend for themselves families torn apart and separated with no promise of reuniting there is violence within families and in cities near and far and in recent days there are cries of individuals in large crowds for justice throughout systems that have been um, long overlooked and dismissed their open wounds, revealing of what is ugly and the exposing of the terrible injustices that have been growing in our world. As the world shakes under us in these difficult times, Lord, open our eyes. Reveal in all of us a need to come clean before your glory and grace, our own biases and fears known and unknown, visible and invisible and our lack of response and action in ignorance, intolerance, and blindness to racism that lies deep within all of us and in the systems we have lived in. Lord, forgive us. Reveal in all of us our own feelings of entitlement and privilege that cause pain and injustice to many, unbeknownst to us in many ways. And as they are bare before you, Lord, forgive us. Inspire us with wisdom to know how to go on to perfection and love and strengthen us as we step towards loving all as Jesus loved to resist all forms of evils, injustice and oppression. 
Create us anew, O Lord, as your people empowered by the Pentecost Holy Spirit with Easter hope, trusting in your goodness, living as grateful people for your love and grace to us and Jesus. Bring strength and healing to our brothers, Phil and Jim, with recent concerns, along with the many with ongoing concerns, as well as those in our hearts at this moment. Bring comfort and peace to the many who grieve the loss of loved ones, and may the Spirit of God unite us all in love and respect for all people. Heal the brokenness of our world, bring cure to this pandemic, and open wide your church in ways you would have us be in this world. Bless and protect our loved ones serving in the armed forces, as well as all the first responders and workers of essential services, and any who are in face of danger on a regular basis. Provide for the ministries of justice for our neighbors and the United Methodist Committee on Relief, who serve the immigrants, the refugees, and asylum seekers, and the many in places of danger and scarcity. We pray for the leaders of the world and the church as we surrender ourselves to your use in ways that bring peace and wholeness to those around us to deliver your love and care. Thank you for being with us always and for the hope that we have in Jesus who showed us through his life, death and resurrection as he also taught us to pray his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. First reading is from the account of creation, the sixth day, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And our second reading is the last four verses of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's a known fact that many pastors avoid preaching on Trinity Sunday because they find the topic so daunting. Uh, not a few have passed the buck and delegated preaching on this Sunday to their associate or some hapless seminarian. Uh, one joke has it that when Jesus asked his disciples, who do others say that I am? The disciples answered, some say that you're John the Baptist raised from the dead. Others say that you are Elijah or one of the other prophets. But then Peter launched into a full-blown discourse on Jesus as the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. And upon hearing this, Jesus, half stunned, simply said, What? <laughs> uh, certainly there are biblical texts that hint at, that even point toward the notion of God as a plurality. Uh, our reading today from Genesis 1 is often cited uh, in this regard, as in verses 1 and 2, there seems to be a distinction between the creating God who made heaven and earth and the Spirit hovering over the chaotic waters. Uh, verses 26 to 28, which were read today, go on to refer to God creating humans in our image, our image, plural. Now in the Synoptic Gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the baptism of Jesus hints at the notion of a trinity when a voice from the heavens loudly affirms Jesus as the beloved Son upon whom the Spirit alights in the form of a dove. Now clearer still in the Synoptic Gospels is today's reading where the risen Christ commissions his disciples to go into all the world preaching the Gospel, teaching all that uh, I have commanded and baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, in other words, this Trinitarian baptismal formula appeared in the mid-80s to 90s of the first century CE, a full 50 or 60 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. And then we have John's Gospel, very different from the Synoptics, which was written around 100 CE, and it presents Jesus in Greek philosophical terms as the Logos, the Word, the pre-existent ordering principle of the universe, co-creator with God. Well, in recent decades, modern theologians have underscored the importance of the doctrine of the Trinity. In fact, one theologian, a Canadian by the name of Stanley Grenz, has, has written a compelling systematic theology based on the Trinity. That's his organizing principle. Uh, his book is titled Theology for the Community of God, and uh, in it, Grenz writes, God's essence is love. God is love refers first to the intra-Trinitarian relationship. God is love within God's self. The Father loves the Son. The Son reciprocates that love. And, and this love between Father and Son is the Holy Spirit. He goes on to say that God is thus the social trinity, the community of love. Uh, this professor goes on to explain how both creation and salvation are external outpourings of God's love. 
You know, in short, God as a loving community of persons in relationship is the basis and model for all personal relationships, all loving relationships, all loving and just communities, of which the church is but one example. Now John's Gospel perhaps most clearly communicates this as Jesus speaks of the intimate relationship that he has with his Father. Now he says Jesus and the Father are one. He says if you've seen Jesus, if you've seen me, you've seen God. If you know Jesus and if you have a personal relationship with Jesus and are immediately drawn into this dynamic of love, um, that's what we mean by having a community uh, based on love. In my sermon from John 14 several weeks ago, I spoke of the paraclete, the spirit of love that Jesus sent his disciples and us, that we might love God, that we might love one another, and that we might love all God's children and all God's good creation. Well, two weeks ago, the Reverend Dr. Margaret Bullitt Jonas, uh, an Episcopalian priest serving uh, a church in Lincoln, Massachusetts. She also preached from John chapter 14, uh, Jesus' farewell discourse. And what immediately grabbed her attention was the very first sentence, do not, do not let your hearts be troubled. So Pastor Margaret asked, how do we make sense of those words? How do those words resonate within us in a time of such enormous uncertainty, loss, and fear? Here we are in the midst of a global pandemic. Our lives have suddenly been turned upside down and we are acutely aware of our vulnerability, vulnerability, suffering and death. People we know and love may be sick or may have died. Businesses have closed. The economy is teetering and not, not far behind and coming on fast. We know that an even larger crisis is bearing down upon us. The climate an ecological crisis. Week by week, the news from climate science seems to get more dire. This precious blue-green planet is reeling, and we reel with it as we face the threat of social and ecological collapse. We'll talk about reeling. Pastor Margaret preached her sermon prior to the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis prior to the massive outrage and upheaval that we as a nation have experienced in the wake of continued racism, in, in the wake of yet another act of police brutality, and the killing of a black man in public, in broad daylight. What in the world could Jesus mean by telling his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled? And was he living in denial of suffering and death? Was he minimizing, perhaps suppressing painful feelings and cold, hard facts? No. And why is that? Well, it's because, as Pastor Margaret points out, Jesus was rooted in the love of God because he knew that nothing could separate him or us from God's love. Because he knew that through the power of his spirit, we would be drawn as he was drawn into the divine life that circulates at the center of everything and that can never be destroyed. As followers of Jesus, what are we to do? Well, the answer is love. We know that. It's love and, and it's a love that expresses itself by caring, by caring for and loving what God loves. In Genesis 1 and 2, God asks us to love God's good creation by caring for it, keeping it and protecting it, not polluting or exploiting it. And in Matthew 28 that we read today, Jesus asks us to love the world, to love our neighbors. How? By sharing and by demonstrating the good news of God's love for all, by respecting, honoring, and treating all persons for who they are, God's beloved children, made in God's image. Amen. Well, our God is a generous God, a giving God who has blessed us in so many ways. So it's out of gratitude for God's blessings that we offer our lives and our gifts as signs of our love for God and neighbor. Now you can give online at uh, GenevaUMC.org or by text. That's the number on the screen. 
uh, and then by mail at 211 Hamilton Street in Geneva, Illinois. Once again, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. We are grateful for your generosity. Now, following the prayer of Thanksgiving, uh, we'll see a short video of our work with uh, orphans in Haiti through our partnership on the ground there, Kids Alive. They're doing a fantastic work there. Following that, we'll have a hymn and then the closing prayer. Now, let's offer a prayer of Thanksgiving. Triune God, you have given generously of yourselves through creation and through the salvation that you offer to all. Bless us and our gifts as we seek to care for your creation and all your beloved people. Amen. Hi, thank you for giving the opportunity to Kids Alive International to provide an update about our ongoing efforts in Haiti. And I'd also like to take this time to thank the United Methodist Church of Geneva for your wonderful support of one month of food supply and personal protection equipment. I am Rebecca Hepner, and I have with me today Robinson, our country director in Haiti, and we are going to share with you uh, our response to the COVID-19 crisis in Haiti it was, as it relates to hunger and feeding, and then as it relates to medical supplies. Robinson, can you give us an update about Haiti and the current situation? How are we responding to the COVID-19? to continue to provide food to the community. So every weekend, so they come to, to uh, our school site and they keep uh, the social distance and, and then we provide them um, food. So we don't want kids or families to stay hungry um, because we don't have school. And um, I know it's very, very difficult for the very, those, um, Poor family, it's very difficult to get food. So we continue the program, even even we have the COVID-19, um, to help you know, the families to have food. Thank you for that update, Robinson. Can you talk a little bit about medical supplies and PPE? Mask, hand sanitizer, um, any other medical supply are unavailable right now in, in population. So last week, we... Uh, we we make some masks with, with our one of our house parents. His name is Adam, and with our he's a teacher. He's a sewing teacher. Him and our kids, residential kids, making masks last week to distribute to our community kids. But hand sanitizer, masks, and gloves, all those things are unavailable. Thank you for that update, Robinson. And thank you for your support of Kids Alive International in Haiti. We really do appreciate our partnership with United Methodist Church of Geneva. I'm going to leave with you some prayer requests. If you could please keep Kids Alive International Haiti in your thoughts and prayers, we would greatly appreciate it. And as always, thank you for being our partners in Christ.
Well, be sure to join us on Facebook at noon each uh, Tuesday and Thursday for Him Improvisations by our talented Scott Stevenson. And join us at noon on Wednesdays and Thursdays for devotions in prayer with our pastors. Next Sunday, be sure to join us as Pastor Esther Lee will be preaching her farewell sermon. Pastor Esther and her family will be moving to Christ United Methodist Church in Deerfield on June 23rd in order to serve the Lord there. And we are so grateful for her five years of faithful ministry with us here in Geneva. Let us pray. Go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.